magic of nature is real magic. And if you have any doubts, this episode will clear them out for you. Welcome to one of the richest and most spectacular ecosystems on the planet, a marine wonderland. In today's episode, we meet the crafty and tricky movers of the underwater realm, the super swimmers. Also, the amazingly intelligent octopus with his bag full of tricks. And many more tricks from the world entwined in a colorful, complex, ever-changing drama. Let's meet all the super swimmers. In one small area of coral reef, over 200 species are entwined in a colorful, complex, ever-changing drama. We are in one of the world's great mixing zones. It's in these shallow Indonesian waters that oriental sea life mixes with the Australian underwater world, creating a region of extraordinary wonder, richness and paranormal diversity. Even with great volumes of water weighing down on them, there is a lot of motion on the seabed. Caution! Nature's wizards are on stage. Starfish stud the reef with amazing color. And so do their relatives, sea urchins. What looks like a swimming plant is also a starfish cousin, the crinoid. Sea urchins can live at a depth of 5,000 meters. And if we speed up the action, you'll see that even with water pressure that can be a thousand times greater than the atmosphere, the white urchins are creating their own charm while feeding from the much bigger red urchin. A relative of the seahorse. This is a banded pipefish. They are cousins of the late Master Dragon. And there's also plenty of movement in the blue fathoms above. Tiny pulsating hairs or cilia roll these comb jellies through the water. Like creative flourish from God's paintbrush, they are a dash of color on the high seas. This is a sea serpent, ribbon eels. Though it looks ferocious and tricky, it is not dangerous to humans. This is a juvenile, a male. Don't go by his meek appearance. As an adult, it will perform its own sex change and turn itself into a female. Abracadabra, now that's what we call magic. Our featured magic trick is the disappearing act, camouflage, or the art of concealment. It's a visual trick that these wizards play to confuse their predators. Like this pygmy seahorse here, who looks so like its host, a gorgonian coral, that you can hardly make out which is which. This ploy can also work the other way around as the predators search for their prey. Like this emotive magician who can change color of its skin in a fraction of a second to mislead its prey. The cuttlefish. Their skin is flecked with tiny elastic pigment filled cells. When these are round, they're not really apparent. 
but when they're squeezed flat by the muscles that surround them, the dense pigment suddenly becomes visible. The chromatophores, as they are called, contain different pigments, giving the cuttlefish a wide range of color patterns to choose from. There are also other masked magicians in the abyss. Here is the crocodile fish. A bottom-dwelling ambush hunter is the master of disguise. A scorpion fish also merges into the reef. Its cousin, the leaf scorpion fish, even mimics bits of plant debris swaying from side to side with the current. These little tricksters are crab-eyed gobies. The two striking eye-like markings on their fins provide protection by making them look rather like crabs. Among the strangers to the reef's inhabitants are frogfish, also camouflage experts with a worm-like lure with which they fish for dinner. Octopi are master escape artists. Puffing out a murky cloud of ink like a magician puffs out a plume of smoke to vanish behind. But where do these creatures keep their smarts when they don't really have a brain? The wonderful discoveries each octopus makes during its life are stored in some secret place, maybe in RNA scattered everywhere in the octopus's body. The smart octopus is hiding here at great risk. Here is a reason why. These are tricks the canny octopus learned over the hundred million years or so it has been prowling the seven seas. You don't need brains for magic, just ancient memories. Fish are the ultimate underwater movers, perfectly designed to glide effortlessly, making them super swimmers. But here is something that moves like a spaceship. Squids are cephalopod mollusks, which are also related to the crafty octopus. Squids steer and stabilize themselves with fins on their mantle, and they can swim both forwards and backwards, any way they want. How do they do that? By forcefully ejecting water from their mantle cavity, they can accelerate away at nearly 40 kilometers an hour and have been known to shoot three meters out of the water, landing on boat decks rather like flying fish. That's some squirt of magic. Fish can be magically fast in laying eggs too. Grunion on the beaches of California not only spawn in large shoals, the number of eggs they lay are also huge, about 2,000 for each female. After the new moon's highest tide, the grunion catch a ride up the beach. Here the females dig themselves into the sand and deposit their eggs, which the males promptly fertilize. The whole process takes just 25 seconds, and the fish are carried back out to sea on the wave after the one that carried them in. Fish actually form many different kinds of alliances. But the one that first comes to mind is the shoal. Hundreds, thousands or tens of thousands acting in unison. If a predator attacks, well the chances are it won't get you. We know that trick. But what about pacts being made between two different species? Some sea chubs have come looking for a black-nosed butterfly fish, the little hoovers of the reef. Using their long snouts, the butterfly fish suck the dirt or dead scales from their client's skin.